Tell me about Omba's fund diversification. Okay, so we only have one fund at the moment. It's the Omba Moderate Global Allocation Fund. And really, we, we call it the Global Allocation Fund because we're allocating capital globally. And it's the dollar strategy, meaning that the investment-grade bonds that we have in that portfolio are in dollars. And this, this is the, the first fund we've launched, and the reason for launching this particular strategy in a, in a fund format was that most of the clients with whom we work, in this, particularly in a separately managed account business, where we manage large accounts for our clients, have opted for the moderate risk, and most have opted for dollar as their global currency, and particularly a lot of the South African clients where, you know, if you're sitting in South Africa and you want to diversify abroad and go into hard currency, a lot of people don't know what currency to choose. Do they go into sterling? Do they go into euro? Do they go into Swiss franc? Do they go into dollar? It tends to be mostly dollar in terms of their thinking. So that's why we've launched that strategy first. So it's extremely diversified, this fund. At the bond level, we've, as I mentioned earlier, we've got investment grade bonds largely split between treasuries and investment grade corporates. And then we take a decision on how much of one or the other to own in, that rate, in, the, in the various ratios and also how much interest rate risk we want to own. But if you look through, and then we've got high yield and we've got emerging markets. And if you look through into the underlying bonds, we have over 3,000 underlying bonds in a client's portfolio from over 1,000 issuers of the bonds. And that's because these are bond ETFs which track major bond indices and they own thousands of underlying bonds. So you have extreme diversification. And the other benefit, just anecdotally, for owning, a, owning bonds through ETFs is if a, if a client wanted to build their own bond portfolio of treasuries or investment grade corporates or emerging market bonds and they had $5 million and they tried to put half into bonds and they wanted to be diversified, they would struggle to go and get the bonds in the market because the size of their orders would be so small that firstly it would be very difficult to purchase in clips of, I don't know, $10,000 or $50,000 or $100,000 because the banks don't trade in so, those small clips very often. So the challenge is actually getting them. And if you could get them, the bid offers would be very wide because you're buying in small size. Whereas the ETFs, they will take up significant portions of the new bond issuances. And so they buy them often at issuance price and they buy them in big size and they have scale and buying power. So it's a very efficient way to own bonds. So, so that's on the bond component, extremely diversified, but mostly dollars for the investment grade bonds. When it goes over to equities, we're extremely diversified. We've got three major re regions, the Americas, EMEA and Asia Pacific. And then within those, we have different countries and sectors. But if you drill through, again, each of the ETFs across the portfolio, you've got 2,600 underlying companies represented by those ETFs. So that's very important because what people need to avoid is what, what we like to avoid is idiosyncratic risk. We don't want to have 10% of a client's money in one stock. You know, in South Africa, there was the Steinhoff scandal. We've had Lehman Brothers go bust, Bear Stearns, WorldCom, Enron, etc. If you're an active manager and you've picked that in your portfolio, and even if it's 5% or 10% or 2% or 3% position and it goes to zero, that's permanent capital loss. When you drill through our portfolios, the top 10 holdings of the stocks out of those 2,600 companies represent about 3.7% of the portfolio, the top 10. So we don't have what's called idiosyncratic risk or single stock risk that can blow up a client's money. So security diversification is very important in our view and it's really at the core of our process because we, we're using major indices and ETFs to build the portfolio. The second thing is we diversified by region and by country, the number of countries we own, and therefore also diversified by currency. We can't tell you with certainty that you should be in dollars or euros or Japanese yen or Swiss franc or Canadian dollar or Aussie dollar. I don't know. I don't know what the world will look like. What we do know is currencies mean revert over long periods of time because you've got all the, the traditional theories of inflation parity and purchasing price parity that hold. And so they mean revert. That's one. You also don't know what the geopolitics of the world looks like in 10 or 20 years. So you could have existential risk relating to a particular currency. Um, you know, you talk of currency wars these days, you know, between the US and China and the, rest and the rest. It's very, very difficult to say with certainty which currency will be the best. Furthermore, when you're saving abroad, often for your children or your grandchildren, one doesn't know in this globalized age where one's children or grandchildren will live. You know, people go abroad, they study abroad, they meet their spouses abroad, and then they could, their spouses could have also come from abroad, and then their children live in, in, are raised in a different place. So how could someone say with certainty they know they're going to spend dollars, euros, pounds, yen in the future? They don't, because the money is often not going to be spent in this generation, it will be spent in the next generation. 
And so we think we don't, so our view is we don't currency hedge the underlying exposures in our portfolios. We keep the underlying currency exposures as we think it adds value to the diversification theory. And we don't want to incur unnecessary hedging costs because every time you hedge currencies, you incur a commission and a charge and that drags on the portfolio performance. So that's really speaking to the diversification of the fund.